Hello and welcome. Today my guest is Delisa Zara and Delisa and I have been working together and I just love the way that she's approaching her health. Welcome to you Delise. Hi Bev, thank you. And so Delise, just tell us what it is that you do. So I'm a coach and a Reiki therapist. Um, I live in uh, northwest Victoria, so in a little country town. And I help women who struggle with being an empath and also within that struggle with um, anxiety because often the two are intertwined. Mm. Well, I guess before we go anywhere, in case somebody doesn't know, what is an empath? Yeah, that's a good question. Lots of people don't know what an empath is. So um, in a really short um, description, an empath is someone who picks up on other people's moods and feelings and is very in tune with other people. And often this happens before they've even received any information. So before they've had any conversation or anything like that, they're picking up on things um, just by tuning in. Yeah. Mm. Okay, good. So we'll learn more about that, I'm sure. So let's talk about your well-being journey. And, you know, describe for me the journey that you've been on in the last couple of years. Uh, yes, so I've had um, fatigue for a really long time. It's been um, more than 10 years now, so fatigue and chronic headaches. And um, it's been a very, very long and hard journey. Um, and along the way, I've sort of struggled with other health issues that have come up as well, so fibromyalgia and also adrenal fatigue. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically my story in, in a summary. Mm. So how how did you know that this just wasn't feeling tired or being exhausted? Um, because I was extremely tired. So um, some days I couldn't get through my day without a nap and I wasn't really even doing anything strenuous. So that was just, you know, working and having a regular kind of day and also because it went on for so long. So I wasn't getting any better. Mm. Mm. And so what would a typical day look like when you were at your worst? Um, so when I was at my worst, I had to plan my day around being able to have a rest or a nap um, in the middle of the day. So, you know, anywhere between lunchtime and early afternoon, I'd have to actually lie down and sleep. And just my thinking and my state of mind was very, very low. I couldn't concentrate. Um, it was hard to work. It was hard even having conversation with, conversations with people as well. So just my brain function was very, very low. Mm, mm. and being obviously we are in a country town you don't really have access to um, other practitioners except for the handful that you were, were able to access directly so yes, what are some mm, what sorry. are some yes, of the so there's just a handful here yeah mm. there's not much access yep mm. so what are some of the things that you did then in those early days um, so early on, I was seeing pretty much um, anyone that I could find um, and have access to. So I would see a kinesiologist quite regularly. I tried naturopaths, um, chiropractors, osteopaths. I did see my GP as well. Um, and also Reiki helped as well. Mm. Mm. So you were, you were open to trying things and... It, you were willing to give things a go so that you could yes. shift the needle on the fatigue. Yes, I was happy to try anything. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and that's what many of us who have a chronic illness find we need to do. Yeah. And so in this journey, so you're very young still. So mm -hmm. you say 10 years. What Was there a triggering event? I believe that I had glandular fever to start with. Um, I didn't get the typical um, sort of symptoms that I heard about when people had have glandular fever. So it's not something that I knew straight away when it happened, but I, I think that's what triggered everything off. Mm. And did, had you had some blood tests that said you had glandular fever? Yes, so much later. It was um, probably five or seven years after um, when I first believe I had glandular fever that I did did have some blood tests and that's what we found out I had, yeah. Mm, mm. Okay, yeah. So you're sort of dealing with the unknown, you're moving from day to day. And so yeah. what, is, what does life look like for you right now? Um, so now it's, it's much better than it was. I still do um, 
struggle with fatigue, it's still sometimes there, and also um, the chronic headaches are there as well. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I manage it heaps better than I ever have before. Um, so I don't need to nap as much as I used to. Um, yeah, my daily life is just much easier and less stressful than it used to be. Mm. And what would you say, what are some of the contributors to that positive shift? Oh, there's a lot there. So um, first thing was deciding to work with you. So for me, um, the biggest thing there was having support and having regular support and accountability with someone else. Um, so previously when I've worked with, um, you know, other therapists, it was just they'd give me a set of things to do and I'd go off and fail at doing them. So having that regular support was a huge thing. Um, my regular sleep pattern has also been a big contributor to that as well. So um, going to bed at the same time every night and getting a good sleep. Um, and food has been a big change for me as well. That's been a big factor, yeah. Mm. And what sort of, what change did you make to the way that you eat? Oh, huge changes. So um, when I first started working with you, obviously we, we used a food diary to see what I was actually eating. And I was really struggling with um, trying not to eat gluten and sugar because I knew that they um, just didn't work well with my body. Um, I was eating a lot of dairy and also just a lot of um, rice and that sort of stuff as well. Um, and not a lot of vegetables. So I, I actually thought I was eating quite well at the time, apart from the excess sugar. And now um, most of my meals have some kind of protein and some, some kind of vegetable in them as well. And I don't eat um, much sugar or gluten. It, it happens every now and then, but not as much as I used to. Yeah. Mm. Mm, that's amazing. Well done to you. <laughs> and um, so what has happened on this journey that you didn't expect? I did not expect to end up where I am now. Um, when you've got fatigue, it's very hard to, to do anything. It's not like, um, you know, having a broken leg where you can still function through the rest of your body. Um, when you've got fatigue, your mind is very, very tired and you're physically tired. So um, doing anything and making any changes is very, very hard. And I... I did lose hope. I, I started to think maybe I'll never, ever get better and never, ever um, feel normal. And, I, yeah, I didn't expect to feel as good as I do now. Yeah. Mm. I also didn't expect to be able to um, actually change what I was eating and stick to it. That was probably a big one for me. Yeah, and no, I, I think just elaborating on that, you know, being in a small country town, you don't have a supermarket just down the road that you can pop out and get a few things along the way. So one, I think one other aspect that you really embraced was the plan, the need to plan. Yeah. And like by doing that, yeah, yeah. getting yeah. organised and planful has actually supported you. So even though you probably, like other people in main centres, have access to many more um, fresh produce that's organic, you don't have the luxury of those things, but you've still managed to improve your health by making wise choices. Yes, yes, definitely, yep. Mm, beautiful. So let's talk about some of the strategies that support you to remain hopeful and resilient. Okay, so there's quite a lot there, I think, that I'm actually doing now. So um, a big one is, like I said before, having that regular support and someone that I can check in with and also um, just asking questions because there was a lot of things I didn't know and there's a lot of information out there about health um, with the internet now, everything's out there. So just having someone that I trusted was giving me the right information. Um, putting my health first, that was probably another, another big thing that I did. Um, it's not something I was ever able to do before. I was always trying to run a business or, you know, run the rest of my personal life um, while I was trying to get my health on track and you just can't do it. When your health issues are really chronic, um, it's very, very hard to do everything at once. So my health had to take priority, yeah. Mm, that's good. And when, you know, when those, because life is not a bed of roses and it's not always smooth, so when those difficult times come, let's say you've got headache or whatever, 
what is it that actually supports you to move forward with that? What, you know, what are some of the things that you do? Um, so having um, planned some of my meals helped um, with that. So having, you know, meals ready to go in the freezer. So on the days that I did feel good, I would do some batch cooking and have some stuff ready to go so that um, I wasn't, you know, just eating whatever because I didn't feel well. Um, also, I think being sure about what I wanted out of my health journey. So when we uh, sort of first spoke, we talked about where I wanted to be. And, um, you know, sometimes I'd, I'd fall off track, but often I would think about where, where it was that I wanted to be and what I wanted to have and how I wanted to feel. So having that focus helped as well. Mm. Um, and then also just knowing what the things were that, did help me to feel better. So something as simple as going to sleep at the same time every night, I knew that that helped, yeah, helped me feel better if I could stick to that. That would help me get in bed earlier rather than, you know, going to sleep at midnight. Yeah, that's, it's just yeah. so important. It's, it's never one thing, you know, and that's what no. you worked out. It wasn't one thing. And yeah. you sort of worked hard to bring all the things together that your body needed for you. And yes, so, Denise, a, bringing bringing lots of things together that say so everything could sort of complement each other and support each other rather than just focusing on one thing. Because if I just focused on food, for example, I wouldn't feel like I do now. It was bringing everything in together. Mm. And I still remember our first session when we only talked about three things, and I had that sense that you're going, "Is that all?" And <laughs> we, we we decided that we would only allow you to master a few things at a time so that you could build the habits and then that would give you the confidence that you could keep doing extra yes. things instead of things being a chore that just became the way you did things. Yes, and I, yes, they had to be easy and I had to enjoy them um, and it was better having only three things to work on first because everyone else that I had worked with would give me a ton of things to go and do and I'd, I'd hit overwhelm and then I, I literally didn't do any of it. Well, yeah, and and that that you so you're so typical of all of us, you know. We we can't we can't just really can't take on everything, and that's I think the danger that some of us as you know coaches may tip into is giving people too many things because we know if you only did these ten things, <laughs> yeah, it's not helpful to somebody who's you know coming. Um, to a new journey with that, choosing yeah. to do something new with it. And especially when you're very tired to start with, it's hard to take on, you know, 10 new things. Um, starting with two or three things is much easier and, and much more doable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so let's talk about balancing health, life and business because obviously you're still in this journey of well-being. And so yeah. talk to me about how you are managing these things. Um, yeah, so I, like I said before, I put, I had to put my health first. So that even meant that my business had to take a back seat or sort of slow down for a little while while I got, um, everything sorted with my health and what I was doing there. Um, so some of, sorry, what did you ask me? Some of the strategies that I'm using. So the balance, how do you keep in balance? The balance. Between the two? Um, the, the biggest key for me was putting myself first and I know that that's something that we all know we need to do but it was actually doing it so it meant that I needed to know from week to week what I was actually doing with my time and having a calendar helped helped me do that so I could visually see um, where my time was going which meant you know my energy what I was doing with my energy um, and also saying no to things that I did not have the energy for so um, you know, if people asked me to commit to things or whatever and I had to say, no, I just did. Yeah, it was, it was like I just went into this little bubble and looked after myself first before doing anything for anyone else. And it, that kind of sounds selfish, but you have to do that first so that you can have that connection with other people and can help other people later on. You need to look after yourself first. Yes, and I think specifically with the kind of work that you're doing and recognising that you are an empath, understanding yeah. what's yours and what's not yours yes yes and I had to do that because you know now I would not be able to help other people who are empaths because you know I'd still be struggling with my own stuff so I had to put myself first and, and be a little bit selfish to start with so I could step up and help other people mm-hmm. 
And let's talk about your business. So how do you support women? So I use a lot of um, practical and very simple strategies um, in my work. So there's a little bit of woo-woo stuff in there, but it's mostly very practical, very simple. Um, and they're all things that I've had to learn myself and I still use myself when I work with, with people. Um, I do work with a lot of empaths and a lot of women who have anxiety and it, it can get very, very overwhelming and also isolating. So a lot of people come to me thinking that, um, you know, they're the only ones that feel the way that they do. But, yeah, the truth is that there's lots of us out there that are empaths. Um, yeah, so I find that using simple, simple strategies works the best. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And so if, you know, you also mentioned earlier that you were a Reiki therapist, do you, do you combine that with the work you're doing with the empath, you know, supporting people? I, yes, I do when I can. I have had a little break from Reiki while I've been um, getting my health in order because my energy just hasn't been there um, to do a Reiki session. But I do combine them, yes. Yeah. So I, I approach everything quite holistically and use all of my yeah, all of my skills and everything I know how to do. I, I sort of use them all together and just use my intuition to feel into what, what someone needs. Yeah, so whether they do need Reiki or whether they need um, someone to sit and talk to and sort through some strategies. Mm. That's beautiful. And so what is your aspiration? Where would you like to be? You know, where would you like to take this business, your life, your health? I'd like it to be big. I, I, yeah, I want to expand it. I want to be serving and supporting lots of women um, and helping them to make changes in, in their own life. Um, I love the possibility of having an impact on, you know, another person's whole life just by working with them. Mm, beautiful. And so what are your tips for living fabulously, Delise? Oh, um, so my biggest tip is putting yourself first. Um, so do the things that you know that you need to do to look after yourself and commit to yourself first before you commit to anybody else. Um, look after your emotional well-being. So for me, um, you know, sometimes I would be so focused on food that it would, it would start to get stressful and I'd have to pull back and, and start focusing on how I felt emotionally and managing my stress. So I think we sort of forget that because, uh, you know, emotions, we sort of can't see them. And they're not tangible. So we forget to look after that part of ourselves as well. And I, I know firsthand that it is really important to look after your emotional well-being because we just don't function as well or make good decisions when we're emotional. Um, yeah, they're probably my two biggest ones. Mm, thank you for that. And so in my book, Hope in a Dark Tunnel, I talk about the four aspects, which is what we work on um, together is looking at the physical aspects because, yes, you do need to eat well, you need to sleep well, you need to move more. But then, like you mentioned, the emotional aspects is so how, how does your food affect your mood and, therefore, how does your mood affect the way that you are in the world? And then also things like, you know, the mental stuff is what's yeah. your mind chatter doing? Are you, you know, experiencing ne negative self-talk when you not achieving what you think you will. And also then the soulful stuff. So, you know, being in touch with yourself, connecting to who you really are and what it means for you. So that's um, really sort of aligned to the way that we, that I work and the way that, that the, um, you know, I've uh, shared the stuff in my book. So yeah. you can, yeah, you can find out more about Delise at her website. It's deliselazara.com.au and she's also on Facebook. And these will be in the show notes for you to uh, come back to. And Delise, what I really love just witnessing and being part of is your willingness to be open and curious to things. So even though you have tried some things in the past, you've never once said to me, oh, I've done that before, I've done that before. Because sometimes in combination, the way that we give the body what it needs, we give you know, our, our emotions and support that it needs, and then they all come together for good. So I think that's been a real, for me, you know, being part of that journey and witnessing that openness and the curiosity has been really uplifting for me too, as well as for you. And I think the other thing you mentioned earlier was 
you didn't expect that this journey would be yours. And I think for many of us who have experienced chronic illness, we, you know, we wouldn't wish it on ourselves. And this is where um, I have some difficulty about things like manifesting illness. I have some real difficulty around that because I don't believe that consciously anyone would want to attract that into their life, you know, knowing what it's like. So it's not help, helpful or gives doesn't build hope for somebody. But I think understanding how you got there is also important. So at least you understood that there was a chronic infection that yeah, led definitely. you down this path and you can take steps towards that. So I think understanding that background is really important too. So yes, thanks definitely. so much for being with me today. Thank you, Bev. That was really, really wonderful to speak to you today. It's been wonderful working with you, so I've loved it.